Okay, everyone, welcome to the afternoon session. Uh, the first speaker will be Francesco D'Andrea, who will speak on CW structures in non-commutative geometry. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, this is uh, the talk is based on this paper that you can see on the screen with uh, several people here, with Piotr, Tomac, and uh, Albert, and Bach, etc. So actually what I'm going to say today uh, some of the things that I'm going to say uh, are not uh, in the version that you find on archive, but they will be in the next version soon, I hope. Uh, so let me try to explain what the talk is about and what is the motivation for uh, CW complexes in the framework of non commutative geometry. Well, wh why CW complexes are interesting? Well, for many reasons. And uh, first of all, because they are of a combinatorial nature that allows for homotopy computations. And in some sense, this is uh, a, a similar spirit to that of graph star algebra that you could say that they also are of combinatorial nature that allows to compute things. So you could say that uh, it would be nice to say that the CW complex is in topology, say in, uh, uh, when you are, uh, is a two homotopy, uh, what graph star algebra is a 2K theory. And we would like, it would be maybe nice to have a notion of uh, uh, CW structure in non computative geometry such that uh, maybe graph star algebra could uh, uh, be a tool similar to classical CW complexes in uh, topology. Okay, <clears throat> so let me just uh, recall two basic notions that uh, will be useful later on, that of uh, strict, say, and weak homotopy equivalence. You all know what a model equivalence means. You have two topological spaces, X and Y, and a continuous map F from one to the other is a model equivalence. If you can find the map going in the opposite direction, such that the two compositions are homotopic to the identities of X and Y. And one of the reasons why this is useful is that if you have a model equivalence, this induces um, an isomorphism in homotopy. If you have a continuous map from uh, X to Y in using isomorphism in homotopy, this is called weak homotopy equivalence. And every homotopy equivalence is also a weak homotopy equivalence, but of course the converse is not true. So what has to do this uh, with uh, CW complexes? Well, here are just two examples of uh, the kind of uh, results that you have about classical results about CW complexes. One is, uh, uh, Whitehead theorem saying that uh, uh, in general, so weak homotopy equivalence is weaker, does not imply homotopy equivalence unless you are working with CW complexes. In that case, um, every weak homotopy equivalence is actually uh, strict. And another important result is uh, one of the several approximation theorems uh, that you can see on the screen saying that if you have any topological space X, then there exists a CW complex zeta such that, uh, and the weak homotopy equivalence from zeta to X. So uh, every topological space is uh, uh, weakly homotopy equivalent to a CW complex. Now it would be nice to have, for example, uh, something similar for uh, uh, star algebra, I don't know, to be able to say that uh, with uh, co the correct notion of uh, weak equivalence, whatever it is, uh, maybe every sister algebra is weakly equivalent to a graph sister algebra, but maybe that is a, a bit strong, maybe higher rank, I don't know. And we will see that at least in uh, one example, in a class of examples, we have this uh, kind of result we will see um, later on in this talk. So we are interested in uh, finite uh, CW complexes, which means uh, compact outdoor spaces. And uh, we will uh, pass almost immediately for, from the category of uh, compact outdoor spaces that uh, in this slide, I denote like this, uh, just uh, to keep it uh, the notation short. And we will, want, we will pass immediately from this category to the category of uh, quantum spaces. <clears throat> Okay, I don't think I have to explain to this audience the philosophy of, <laughs> of uh, non-commutative topology. So I think uh, most of you agree that uh, uh, a unital sister algebra is uh, a kind of generalization of uh, the notion of topological space. In fact, uh, a generalization of uh, 
I mean, uh, we will uh, call the node like this, uh, space. Uh, this is not the notation in uh, the preprint. It's a shorter notation that I use for this slide, uh, just to not to write too much. And uh, by this uh, symbol, I will denote the um, dual category to that of unital sister algebra, which means the same object, but arrows are reversed. The, the reason why we do this is the usual uh, Gelfan Neumark uh, duality saying that there is an equivalence between uh, commutative. Uh, well, there is a, uh, yeah, between uh, the opposite category to commutative unital sister algebra and compact uh, Hausdorff spaces. So the notation that I'm going to use is the following to uh, stress that I'm not working with a, a topological space, but with something more general, I will use capital letters uh, in bold, like a capital X, capital Y, capital Z. So if uh, C of X, uh, sorry, bold X, uh, if uh, C of X uh, is uh, any sister algebra, unital sister algebra, possibly non-commutative, um, I will denote by X the dual object in the opposite category and, and so on. C of Y will be uh, a unital sister algebra whose uh, dual object is Y and so on. Uh, when uh, I write an arrow from bold X to bold Y, so a morphism in this uh, category of uh, quantum spaces, I should say compact quantum spaces, uh, this uh, really means that what you have is a unital star homomorphism going in the opposite direction from the sister algebra of Y to the sister algebra of X. So this is just a notation because we want to write a theorems in the spirit we would do in topology and uh, think uh, like uh, we are working with uh, some kind of uh, topological spaces, even if we really have. So, uh, okay, so the goal is uh, to develop uh, a theory of CW complexes in, uh, in this category, in this category that uh, for this talk I denote by Q space, compact quantum spaces. Okay. So, um, no problem with the uh, audio? Okay, yes. Okay, and... Um, so uh, as I said, the CW complexes uh, are good when you have, uh, want to do homotopy computations. So they have uh, this uh, combinatorial nature that allows you to compute things. So the first thing we want to understand is uh, what kind, really what kind of uh, generalized uh, uh, cohomology theory in this case we want to use to replace uh, homotopy. And the first, uh, I mean, the natural thing would be to use K-theory because we know it very well and is, uh, well, something that you can use with uh, non-commutative sister algebras. And uh, so let me start uh, with one example to try to explain why maybe we want a bit more than just uh, plain K theory. So uh, suppose uh, as an exercise, you want to compute the K theory of the discrete endpoint space and the K theory of uh, the complex projective plane of a dimension N minus one. Okay, very easy computation. The first one is the zeta to the power n. The second one also is zeta to the power n. Now, this is not completely true because then one can uh, uh, remember that the K theory of uh, topological space is uh, not just uh, a, um, a Z model, not just an abelian group, but a ring. And in fact, as a ring, there is a famous result by Adam or Akia saying that the ring, uh, the K theory ring of CPN minus one is zeta of X over X to the power N. So these uh, two very different uh, simple spaces have uh, um, two uh, have K theory that is uh, the same uh, as uh, abelian groups, even graded abelian groups. So, uh, but these uh, two K theories are not isomorphic as uh, rings. Uh, this should suggest that, uh, um, well, uh, that um, maybe K, uh, for what we want to do, K theory maybe is not a very fine invariant because uh, for topological spaces, you don't distinguish, uh, don't even distinguish between connected and totally disconnected space if you only use the group structure. 
And uh, now I'm going to introduce a problem that actually will be the topic of the next talk, but uh, I'm going to tell you what is the problem, but not what is the solution. This you will see in the next uh, talk. So the point is that the problem is that uh, here uh, for uh, topological spaces, you, you can use uh, the ring structure to distinguish between uh, these two, be between endpoints and CPN. But uh, you only have the ring structure if uh, the uh, sister algebra is commutative. <clears throat> so given in general any sister algebra, unit sister algebra A, you can always map K of A tensor K of A to K of A tensor A. And then uh, if the multiplication map is a staromomorphism, which happens when the algebra is commutative, then you have an induced map in K theory, which composed with the previous one gives you uh, a multiplication on uh, K of A. So uh, what can we do if we don't have this uh, ring structure because the algebra is not commutative? Well, the full answer will be, I mean, the, uh, uh, you will see the answer in the next talk. And now, um, I'm, uh, I will follow a different path. So a way out uh, is, okay, maybe we can forget about the ring structure for the moment. And uh, um, let's observe that if you have two topological spaces, and if you have uh, a, um, an isomorphism of a billion groups from K of Y to K of X, uh, which is induced by a continuous map from X to Y, so if this uh, isomorphism is induced by continuous map, that, then it is actually an isomorphism of rings. So maybe a tentative solution is just uh, you uh, forget about the ring structure and you work with uh, morphisms in K theory, with isomorphism in K theory that are not are completely arbitrary, but induced by maps between topological spaces. So for a general sister algebra, this is what we call the uh, K equivalence. Uh, so uh, from the dual point of view, a K equivalence is a staromorphism between uh, two sister algebras that induces an isomorphism in K theory. And this applies in particular to commutative sister algebra, to continuous functions on topological spaces. And in the commutative case, uh, uh, as uh, we observed, uh, every K equivalence uh, uh, well, uh, induces an isomorphism of K rings, not only of K groups. And in the non commutative case, you don't have this uh, thing in the middle. In the non commutative case, still you have something uh, implying inducing isomorphism of K groups, but which is uh, a bit stronger. Uh, Francesco, perhaps yeah. it would be worth to mention that we are really talking only unital sister algebra yes, here. So and yeah. unital star homomorphisms, just to yes, the everything here is unital. The category, even if I denote it by Q space, it should be compact quantum space is dual to unital sister algebra. And every map is uh, between algebras, unital algebras is unital. So it sends one to one. Otherwise, yes, if this was a correct observation. OK. <clears throat> OK. <clears throat> So what is the CW complex? But okay, <laughs> this is maybe a bit elementary. If you have a compact Hausdorff space, a CW structure, um, and I should say finite, but uh, I will just, uh, every CW structure today will be finite. So I will not uh, say the word finite. So a CW structure on X uh, is uh, a sequence of uh, uh, compact Hausdorff spaces, X0, X1, Xn, where Xn is equal to X, and uh, uh, topological uh, embeddings uh, such that X0 is uh, a finite discrete space, and uh, you obtain uh, each Xk from Xk minus one by gluing uh, a ball of the of some dimension by gluing a ball to the preview closed ball to the previous topological space along its boundary sphere. So in, in categorical terms, this means that you have a, a commutative square where here you have xk, here xk minus one, below you have the pole and the sphere of some dimension. And in this commutative square, the map here is uh, the map ascending points of the sphere, the, the natural, I mean, a boundary map from the sphere to the ball. Uh, and uh, it should be a push out diagram. So once you formulate this uh, uh, idea of gluing spaces in 
categorical terms, then it is uh, almost immediate to dualize everything past to sister algebras and, and try to formulate a notion of uh, CW complex. And uh, okay, this is the next slide, actually. <clears throat> and yeah, so uh, one useful thing of uh, having this, of having this uh, filtration by skeleton, is that uh, uh, to every uh, push out diagram uh, like this of topological spaces, so there is an associated exact sequence. Uh, well, where uh, there is an exact sequence in. Uh, uh, in uh, homology or cohomology, uh, and uh, but even in uh, K theory, which is what uh, we are interested in, um, which is the Meyer Vietoris sequence. So we want to keep this for uh, quantum spaces to have something like this, something that allows us maybe to uh, compute uh, K theory recursively using uh, this Meyer Vietoris sequence. Okay, so yeah. Sorry. One, yes. Uh, so if, if you think about skeleton as an analog of uh, some subcomplexes of of bounded uh, dimension, then uh, you should allow gluing some collection of um, cells instead of a single one. Yeah, sure. Otherwise, uh, sometimes the dimension doesn't increase. Yeah, okay. yeah, this is true. This I mean, is... I'm hiding this fact, but yeah, of yeah. course, so you can think here at each step, I'm assuming I have touched only one cell. But I can attach a cell of the same dimension uh, in uh, several steps. So I don't know if this is uh, the point. Yes, yes, yes. So but... here I'm not assuming anything on the dimension, except that maybe is, uh, the sequence of dimension is uh, increasing, but not strictly increasing. Yeah, but so I'm it... referring to the, the yeah. word skeleton. Yes. So skeleton is related to, to this yeah. inductive structure of yeah. dimensions. Yes. So you say if I only attach one ball at each step, they are not all skeletal. Yes. Only when you increase the dimension. Yeah. But we are doing this because we want a simple push out diagram. So at each step, we want to really attach a single cell. Okay. Yeah. So then the dualization is uh, almost immediate if you want to do it in, uh, in the obvious way. So instead of uh, push out the uh, diagrams uh, of topological spaces, you can uh, consider uh, pass to functions on topological spaces and you have a pull di back diagram of uh, sister algebras. And uh, so actually here, maybe, I don't know if I can write something. Uh, so writing is, uh, I should have exercised with, ah, I choose a color, okay, yes. So you can dualize this and transform it in C. Does I remember the color? Uh, C of no, I can only draw one line and then it either forgets about uh, my choice. <laughs> okay, maybe. Okay, I will say it with, without writing, it's not important. Okay, <clears throat> so take this uh, commutative square, add C everywhere, meaning that you replace topological spaces by uh, commutative sister algebras. And all arrows uh, in uh, these morphisms should be reversed. And what you get, the dual uh, notion, I mean, the dual of a push out diagram becomes a pullback. And in particular, on the bottom here, what you get in the category of sister algebra is a, a quotient map of sister algebras, which is uh, the um, pullback of uh, a closed embedding, uh, quotient map of sister algebra from functions on uh, closed ball to functions on the sphere. And uh, with uh, this idea, so this was the idea um, of uh, Ehlers, Loring, Pedersen when they introduced non-commutative CW complexes in uh, like 
25 years ago. And the idea was, okay, instead of uh, gluing things uh, with uh, push-out diagrams, we use pullback diagrams of sister algebras. And on the bottom of, of each pullback diagram, uh, instead of having a quotient map from functions on a ball to functions on a sphere, uh, we allow tensoring these uh, commutative sister algebras with finite dimensional ones. So, so this is what sometimes is called uh, almost commutative space. So you have a cell that is uh, almost commutative and the map, uh, a, a morphism from this to, uh, which will be the tensor product of the boundary map with uh, morphism of finite dimensional sister algebras. Um, Okay, so this was uh, in uh, 1998. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there are examples uh, that we like very much related to graph sister algebras where uh, this, uh, this idea of using this kind of uh, cells to, uh, to give uh, a generalization and commutative generalization of the notion of CW complex is uh, not enough. And the example, uh, I mean, one example that we would like to include uh, in this theory CW complex is where uh, this uh, choice of almost commutative uh, cells uh, doesn't work is uh, uh, the example of uh, um, quantum complex projective spaces that come from Waxman Seubelman quantum field. Here you see, so here you see. Uh, the uh, graphs uh, in the graph sister algebra presentation of uh, uh, the odd dimensional waxman seibelman quantum sphere and uh, uh, ong Shimansky balls, which I denote uh, like uh, standard sphere and ball, but with a Q below. So it is a standard result. The spheres were introduced originally uh, uh, using uh, generators and uh, relations like uh, complex coordinates with some commutational relation involving uh, a deformation parameter Q. Then it was proved around uh, 2002, uh, a little before maybe, that um, the sister algebra of uh, waxman sobel one quantum sphere does not depend on Q. Um, it is the same whatever is Q uh, from zero uh, included to one excluded. And it is isomorphic to a graph sister algebra. And the graph is the one that you see in the picture. In uh, dimension to n plus one, you have n plus one vertices, each has a loop. And uh, from, from each vertex, you have uh, uh, one arrow to every other vertex on, uh, on the right. So if you remove from this graph on top, you remove uh, uh, the last loop, what you get is the graph of the, uh, of the quantum ball. So uh, in particular, there is a map, a, a quotient map from uh, uh, this sister algebra to this sister algebra, which is analogous to the uh, boundary, I mean, uh, to the pullback of the boundary map of a unit from a unit sphere to a unit ball. And this map is the one that does, uh, I mean, is almost the obvious one since each uh, partial isometry and projection on top to the corresponding one in the bottom diagram. And here you have one extra partial isometry uh, uh, associated to this loop. And what this morphism does is that it, it sends this. Uh, uh, partial isometry to the projection of the last uh, vertex. So it does not disappear, it becomes a projection. This is a, a, a quotient map which is not a U1 equivariant with respect to the gauge action on uh, graph sister algebras, but still it has the properties. I mean, it is also the classical boundary map is not uh, uh, has the same problem. Sorry, Francesco, uh, this should be probably n minus one yeah yeah the boundary yes. map is the other yes. one <laughs> right uh sorry this is a, a question map from the sphere to the ball the, uh, the um, boundary map uh, we are talking about goes from the ball to the lower dimensional sphere that you get uh, killing the last uh, vertex yeah. which mm -hmm. now is a sink and when you kill this vertex what um what happens to the extra generators is that they just are mapped to zero both the projection of this vertex and the partial isometries attached to all the arrows ending in this vertex. 
Yes, and this map is the actually the boundary map from uh, um, from the ball to the sphere, and this is uh, uh, U1 everywhere. Okay, so the, uh, this idea of uh, cutting first one loop and then a vertex and all arrows attached to that vertex can be generalized. And uh, suppose you have uh, some graph that uh, has the following uh, properties, so some graph with uh, um, a distinguished vertex, uh, V bar in this picture, um, satisfying the following condition. First of all, from this vertex, uh, the only arrows starting at this vertex is a loop. There are no other arrows with source of this vertex. There are arrows besides this loop um, that have this vertex as a target. And the third condition tells us that if there is any other vertex, say here, different from this uh, V bar, and if from uh, uh, this other, this vertex, uh, uh, there is an arrow going to V bar, then there should be an arrow also going somewhere else. So in other terms, basically one and three, so one uh, and three just tell you that this uh, six single vertex is uh, uh, hereditary and saturated. Uh, um, and the second condition is just, I mean, uh, to have something non trivial that uh, this vertex is not completely disconnected from, uh, uh, from the rest of the graph. Uh, since you get here something, uh, this single vertex is hereditary and saturated, we know that, uh, I mean, the, the maps I was talking about, the, the analogous maps I was talking about in previous slides are, are well defined. You can, you have a quotient map where you kill this single loop. And you have another question map where you build this vertex and all the arrows ending in this vertex. Sorry, Francesco. Yeah. Is there any reason why the subgraph is in the form of a smartphone? I uh, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's uh, just a coincidence. And uh, OK, there are several examples besides Waxman, Soibelman, Quantum Sphere, but I'm not going to mention them. Uh, you can find them in uh, this paper with Piotr, Marius, and uh, Francesco. So whenever you have uh, this kind of graph that we call the trimmable, uh, you can construct now a commutative square and prove that it is a pullback. And in fact, it is a a U1 equivariant pullback diagram for suitable actions on uh, the um, on the sister algebras that I'm going to specify now. So here in this picture, whenever you see a graph, I really mean the sister algebra of, this, of that graph. So it's a commutative square with four graph sister algebras. Uh, here you have a a, a trimmable uh, graph, uh, according to the definition I, I gave before. So uh, one map, the vertical map, is the one which kills both the loop, the vertex, and all arrows attached uh, that, that end to this uh, distinguished vertex. Uh, so this uh, vertical quotient map here. Uh, here, the horizontal map is uh, uh, the uh, coaction of uh, functions on the, on the circle that is a dual to the gauge action. So we identify U1 and the circle, and uh, here you have a gauge action, you, you dualize and you get this uh, coaction. So uh, what you get here is uh, the same sister algebra that you had on the left, tensored with uh, uh, the sister algebra of this graph, which is uh, simply C of S1. This is canonical gauge coaction, not weighted. Yeah, canonical gauge coaction. On top uh, here, we have uh, something which is uh, the composition of the coaction, of this coaction, uh, composition with, with something. If you just coact, you get uh, these uh, tensored with functions on the circle. And after coacting, I do something on the first uh, factor. Uh, I kill uh, this loop. OK. <clears throat> So one can prove that this is uh, using standard graph sister algebra techniques. One can prove that this is a pullback diagram. And now let's see what is this diagram in the special case of Waxman-Soibelman uh, quantum spheres. So maybe 
yeah. it's important to emphasize that here when you say you kill the loop, you actually you shrink it to a point. You don't really kill it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I kill the loop from the picture, but yes. the, the partial isometry is sent to the... Exactly. Uh, it's the not, yeah. Because... It does not disappear. In this embedding, you know, a yeah. boundary map, you, when you say kill, you really send projections to zero, yeah, yeah. all these partial isometries to zero. Yeah. But here you just send it to a projection, so yeah. it's not vanishing, it's just you yeah. shrink it. Okay. So... <laughs> Well, in the case of uh, waxman sobelman quantum sphere, after uh, passing, since we have a U1 equivariant pullback diagram, we can uh, pass to uh, the subalgebras of uh, uh, given by U1 invariant uh, elements. And if we do this, what we get is the following pullback diagram. Uh, on the left, uh, top left corner, we have the uh, sister algebra of the uh, quantum projective uh, plane complex dimension s here we have the same but in dimension complex dimension n minus one and uh, below what you get is uh, um, uh, wax man sobel man quantum sphere and uh, and uh, the ong shimansky non-commutative ball the horizontal map is really um uh, is uh, the boundary map that we see before in terms of uh, well the dual of this boundary map that we see be so before in terms of uh, graphs so this looks uh, really like uh, um, the picture uh, uh, where uh, i mean this looks like attacks attaching uh, one uh, cell to a um, pro complex projective plane along its boundary sphere to get something of a higher demand. So if you want to interpret this as a piece of a CW structure, what you have below, below you don't have just a sphere and a ball, and you don't have almost commutative spaces. So you have a waxman soibelman quantum sphere and on Shimansky ball. So the idea is that uh, we would like to generalize uh, this uh, notion of CW structure uh, uh, by allowing uh, more general cells that, than uh, just almost commutative ones. So below you see the basically what this diagram becomes if you uh, pass to the dual category. So drop the, the C and reverse all the arrows. And this is uh, the, the opposite morphism uh, of uh, this uh, quotient map from the sphere to the ball. But here is... Uh, There is something wrong with uh, with the arrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are uh, switched. Sorry, there is a mistake in the picture. This is uh, yeah. Uh, this happened when uh, uh, first uh, it was uh, shaped like a diamond. Uh, then I rotated it <laughs> and I did something wrong with the peaks. So here you have a ball, and uh, here you have a sphere. Yeah. So when you take the limit Q to, to zero or one, right? So it should recover the, the relations in, in the commutative setting, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you write everything in terms of these generators and relation, uh, original ones by waxman Soibelman, uh, and then you just put a two equal to one, you find uh, what you expect. I see. So, and then the, the maps really agree with the, the classical setting, like bluing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it agrees, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, uh, it's not that you get that in uh, the limit of Q going to one uh, topological sense. It's not really a limit. It's just uh, using the mm -hmm. correct yeah. generators uh, and then putting, uh, substituting one to two and noticing that you get something uh, mm -hmm. meaningful. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, let me repeat again that here the picture is wrong, that uh, these two should be switched. And yes, so after uh, this uh, work on uh, trimmable graph sister algebras, then we started wondering if we could uh, generalize this notion of a CW complex in non-commutative non framework with uh, more general, using uh, some more general sister algebras as uh, cells. And... Uh, <clears throat> 
So let me also observe that here. Uh, so what is that we want? Uh, uh, what is that we want to glue and how? Here in uh, this diagram, okay, uh, you have to, uh, again, in the correct one, uh, the boundary map, uh, classically the boundary map is injective. And in this case, uh, you, you have a, a surjective staromomorphism of sister algebras. And this property is important because it's what tells you that uh, if you have a push out a diagram, in the case of topological spaces, if you have, if you have a top push out diagram and uh, uh, this arrow is uh, injective, uh, then uh, you have an associated long exact sequence. Uh, uh, well, here you can see it in uh, uh, singular uh, homology, but there is an analogous one in, in a K theory. Uh, in the picture, I wrote this one because it if you are familiar with the differential geometry, this is uh, uh, how Meyer Vietoris look like when you talk about uh, the RAM cohomology. So you have something similar uh, in, in the case of uh, uh, manifolds uh, and the RAM cohomology. What we usually teach is that given a manifold P, if we can decompose it as a union of two open subset X and Y, then there is a, this a sequence relating the cohomology of X, Y, their intersection that are here denoted by Z, and uh, the cohomology of the big space. Here you have something similar. Uh, so this can be generalized, first of all, uh, well, to topological spaces, uh, to CW complexes, for example, and singular cohomology. Uh, and uh, you need, uh, you don't really need uh, an open covering. What you need is uh, just a push out diagram where. Uh, at least uh, this arrow is uh, injective. Um, uh, dualizing, it means that you have a pullback diagram of commutative sister algebras where uh, uh, one arrow is uh, surjective. And this also, also in case theory. And actually, it also in case theory also for non commutative sister algebra. So whenever you have uh, a pullback diagram of uh, arbitrary unital sister algebras, uh, which, which has uh, one surjective arrow, you have an associated long exact sequence. In case, Sorry. except that is not Sorry, very long start. because uh, if you have a subjective star homomorphism sister algebras, yeah, then in the commutative case it corresponds to a close, close embedding, yeah, not yeah. injective. Man. Yeah, so this is a really equivalent that is uh injectivity of this map and subjectivity of the no, 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 injectivity is not enough, closed embedding. Uh, yeah, sorry, closed embedding. Yeah, it's a con not only continuous injective. Yes. Yeah, because this is, of course, this is a topological subspace the intersection. In general, you need a closed embedding. Yes. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, you need a closed embedding if you want to, that the dual is uh, surjective, but I'm not sure that you need it for Meyer Vietoris. So I should double check. Well, one has to check it, I'm not sure. Yeah, but for sister algebras, we use uh, uh, surjective star homomorphism that are the uh, dual to close embedding in the community. Uh, Sorry, you can weaken yeah. this assumption if you combine this with excision. Okay. 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 But in any case, we are going to have a closed embeddings because we have surjective map of unital sister algebras. <clears throat> Okay, so what we, uh, uh, I told you how we want to glue things using uh, uh, pullback diagrams where one map is uh, surjective. And now what we want to glue here, I don't want to give all the details, but basically, um, so first of all, yes, uh, whenever uh, we write uh, an arrow like this between uh, uh, compact quantum spaces, what we really mean that is that there is a surjective unit of staromomorphism between the corresponding sister algebra is going in the opposite direction. And uh, so what we want to do is uh, to use uh, a morphism like this uh, to glue a cell to something to get something bigger. And uh, uh, what kind of cells? Okay, uh, the important thing is that they should behave from the point of view of K-theory similarly to uh, a ball and this uh, boundary sphere. So I'm not going to read the details. But uh, the important thing is that uh, a map, uh, um, uh, what we call here, uh, this will be called the lateral uh, ecofibration uh, bet uh, between two quantum spaces uh, uh, is good for us as a cell in, uh, to define a CW structure. 
if it induces in case theory short exact sequences uh, similar to the one induced by the boundary map from a classical sphere to the classical ball. And uh, skipping all the details, there are at least two classes of examples where this works. Uh, and one is Waxman Seibelman quantum spheres. So the other one is uh, the um, Higard quantum spheres and Paul Gieses, which maybe now I'm not going to tell you the construction because it's a bit late. So maybe let's uh, skip uh, the construction. And um, maybe I, I will only tell you the notation. So these uh, Higard spheres, whatever they are, uh, we denote them with uh, low, uh, with uh, an H uh, subscript instead of Q. So S to N minus one H is uh, this, uh, our quantum sphere, which has a sister algebra. Then this is not always introduced, but uh, you can prove that the sister algebra is uh, uh, this kind of quotient of a tensor product of several copies of the Teplitz algebra by a uh, tensor product of several copies of compact operators. These are higher rank graph sister algebras. These are higher rank. They are not graph sister algebras, but they are higher rank sister algebras. Uh, the sister subalgebra of U1 invariant elements is what we interpret as uh, describing uh, uh, some kind of uh, quantum uh, complex projective plane that also is denoted with the uh, subscript H. And uh, what uh, replaces uh, the uh, Hong Shimansky balls in this context is uh, uh, this uh, Teplitz operator to the power n that we interpret as functions on some kind of quantum polynomial. So Teplitz operators we interpret as a, uh, a non-commutative version of uh, the algebra of functions on a, on a closed disk. And then we can take tensor product, which is uh, uh, dual to taking a Cartesian product of the underlying topological spaces. So here, uh, our boundary map goes from uh, uh, a sphere, our Kafka vibration goes from uh, this uh, Higgard sphere to uh, a quantum polydisc, which I mean, a polydisc uh, in the classical case is homeomorphic to a ball. Here is not homeomorphic, but we could prove that is uh, uh, equivalent in the sense of uh, a, 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 at a homotopy level in a suitable sense. Uh, I'll try to say something in the remaining 15 minutes. <clears throat> okay. So um, uh, let, let me show you uh, a diagram. Let's look at this uh, lower right part of this uh, diagram. Is uh, uh, this commuter this square uh, in the category of quantum spaces. So, so you should always think that what you actually have is a sister algebra with arrows going in the opposite direction. And this in particular is uh, uh, the amorphism dual to a surjective staromorphism of sister algebras. So let's look at this uh, square. So this square is really um, uh, the way uh, these uh, quantum projective spaces were defined as uh, uh, a, well, almost the definition. The original definition was a multi, as a multi pullback, but then you can show that it is, um, that is the same as a, a, a standard pullback for sister algebras or push out for quantum spaces, where here you have a polydisc, here you have this, uh, the Higgard sphere and this uh, boundary map from the sphere to the polydisc. And uh, what you have on the left uh, is what we call the, the uh, tubular neighborhood of uh, CPN minus one H. And now I have to go back. So just remember that this is, uh, well, one possible way to define uh, this uh, projective uh, space as a push out. And I have to go back because I have to tell you what is uh, this quantum space. <clears throat> so this quantum space that we de denote uh, by TN, CP, and H, this is also all the notation Then we changed in the version of the preprint that will be on archive soon, but for this talk, I'm keeping these old notations. So by definition, this is described by the sister algebra that you obtain by taking the sister algebra of the sphere, tensoring with a quantum disk, and then you take the uh, subalgebra of U1 invariant elements. So it's kind of, uh, you can think of this sphere as a, some kind of non-commutative principle U1 bundle over CPN. And this is a kind of associated uh, uh, disk bundle, if you want. Um, so and maybe it's important to indicate that here, you see, 
uh, when you look at this U1 action, is diagonal. And this is why it's yeah. very non trivial space. Yeah, you have here. U1 action both here and here, yeah. and the canonical actions, and then you take the subalgebra of U1 invariant elements. Yeah. Now, of course, if you have the tensor product of something invariant here, tensor the unit of the list operators, this is inside this algebra. And this is how you construct the map from a map from uh, the quantum projective space to this tubular neighborhood by taking an element in this sister algebra and sending it to the same element tensor the unit of this algebra. And this map one can prove, which is uh, um, it induces an isomorphism in K-theory. So this map is uh, a, a K-equivalent. So this will be important in, uh, in a moment. So what you have, you can imagine that this map is a dual to something, to some uh, morphism from uh, uh, the tubular neighborhood to CPNH. And you could think of this as something, the tubular neighborhood, you could think of it as uh, uh, CPN with a disk attached to each point, and this as some map shrinking the disk. But I mean, the picture is not very good in the non commutative case because, in the classical case, this is basically what you have that this is a deformation retraction. And in the quantum case, no, you don't have. It's not a deformation retraction in the sense that you don't have a map going in the opposite direction and in a way to include, a natural way to include this in the neighborhood. So you lose this inclusion of a CPN into its tubular neighborhood, but you still have the map which contract these fibers. And this map is as good as a deformation retract, meaning that induces isomorphism in case. So back to this diagram. So now we look at this again. Uh, these look similar to the diagram we had for uh, waxman seibelman uh, quantum projective spaces, except that in that case, here we had CPN minus one. And now we don't have CPN minus one, but the tubular neighborhood. Now, the tubular neighborhood is not CPN minus one, but still you have a morphism from these two CPN minus one H, which is uh, an isomorphism in case theory. So a K equivalence that we denote with this uh, kind of thing of, of arrow. So what you can do, the one below is a push out diagram. What, what you can do is to complete this uh, to another push out diagram. And here you get something that we denote by CPN H tilde. And now, so you have uh, almost uh, a, a, almost a cofibration from CPN minus one H to CPNH, almost meaning that you would have it if you could invert this arrow, if you could invert this K equivalence. In general, you cannot, you cannot invert the K equivalence, but you can do it at the level of a K theory. So the idea was uh, to interpret this kind of structure as uh, uh, a piece in a, CW, in a CW complex. The idea is to formally invert this uh, equivalence. And this is what led, this was mainly atomic idea. So I hope that uh, I, I'm telling it right, but this is what led to the following uh, idea to use a something as a little modification of something that was uh, already studied in the literature that are uh, Waldhausen categories. So here uh, we added CW. So this we call the CW Waldhausen category. Uh, and uh, CW is a little modification of the original notion that I'm going to tell you uh, immediately. <clears throat> so what is uh, this stuff? This is a category. Uh, with uh, an initial and the terminal object, and uh, the green uh, the green terms here are uh, stress what is new compared to the original definition. You have an initial and the terminal object that in you know, in a standard Waldhausen category they should be the same, and you have two distinguished classes of morphisms. One uh, 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 was element we call cofibrations and one was element we call weak equivalences satisfying several axioms. Um, first of all, isomorphism are both weak equivalences and cofibration. You can compose uh, cofibrations and you get a cofibration and the same for weak equivalences. 
the unique morphism for every object X, so the unique morphism from the initial object to X is a cofibration. And then you have uh, other two axioms that are more complicated. So on the left, uh, whenever we have a push out diagram and uh, below a cofibration, then first of all, also F, the morphism on top, should be a cofibration. And in addition, uh, G is a weak equivalence if and only if A. This is uh, um, uh, this is uh, the part that is uh, a new compared to the original definition of all those category. Last axiom that I'm not going to read, maybe just tell you that uh, you can uh, when you have uh, push outs, you can uh, um, push out weak equivalences. <clears throat> and uh, an example of this uh, CW Waldhausen category is. Uh, Sorry, I had a comment. Yeah. Originally, Waldhausen uh, considered similar categories, but uh, of pointed spaces. Yeah. So the initial and, and the terminal objects were identified. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is so why this, I put this, so this in green, not because there is no terminal object in the original verse. definition. Yeah. And also, yeah, in so, yeah, one example, of course, is uh, the category of topological spaces where uh, the weak equivalents are the weak amount of the equivalents and uh, cofibrations are uh, closed embeddings. And uh, another example of this uh, CW Waldhausen category is given by uh, compact quantum spaces. Here, uh, uh, cofibrations are opposite of uh, quotient maps of unital sister algebras, and weak equivalences are uh, induced by these uh, K equivalences. The initial and terminal object are the same as for in the case of topological spaces, the empty set and the one point space. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so uh, uh, given a CW Waldhausen category, you can now formally invert weak equivalences and pass to the homotopy category and uh, something which is uh, represented by a cofibration and uh, the formal inverse of a weak equivalence uh, is uh, denoted by this kind of arrow. And uh, this was called in the preprint a weak cofibration. And weak, of, weak cofibrations so are, are represented by this kind of uh, diagrams, by our classes of diagrams like this. And they can be composed uh, in, uh, in the obvious way. If you have uh, two uh, roofs attached, you can form a big roof, and the big roof will, will represent the composition of uh, the two weak cofibrations you started from. Okay, <laughs> and now Wait, I can tell you. Uh, finally, Francesca, can you go back? Uh... So, so you, you complete this roof by push out, right? Yeah, you complete the roof by push out. Okay. So this is the push out of this uh, uh, diagram. I wasn't sure you mentioned it. Yeah, no, I didn't mention it. Okay. I am going too fast. <laughs> okay. And uh, okay. Um, so, and uh, but I'm almost over. So, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Francesco. So without this um, additional axiom CW, yeah. Uh, such inverting would produce completely unmanageable yeah. uh, category. Uh, so, well, adding, I mean, adding all, this CW, also, yeah. we, we obtain something which is called the uh, fraction calculus. Yeah. But also here, uh, for the composition the to make sense, you use the additional axiom saying that uh, since you have a cofibration here and the weak equivalence, when you take the push out, this will be a cofibration and this is a weak equivalence. And then this is uh, a weak cofibration. So also for the composition, there are a lot of things that I'm of course not saying, but there is a reason for these actions. It's not just, of course, random. Okay, so what is a weak uh, CW? Uh, okay, uh, what is a CW, uh, the, uh, the general notion of CW structure we're interested in? Uh, here in this slide is called the weak CW structure, even if we use the much longer name in the, in the paper, <laughs> but again, <laughs> I didn't want to put too many words on the slides. Um, so what we're interested in now is the finite sequences of weak cofibrations in this category of compact quantum spaces. So first of all, the first modification of the notion of CW structure is that here you have weak cofibrations instead of cofibrations. You start from X0, which is, should be a described by a finite dimensional sister algebra. So it should be a finite non-commutative space. 
And uh, each uh, uh, weak cofibration is uh, represented by a roof like this, where uh, xk minus one goes to xk passing through some auxiliary quantum space. And, uh, and if you look at this part, at the red part, the actual cofibration, uh, x tilde k should be obtained from xk minus one by gluing some kind of quantum ball along this boundary sphere. So it should be part, this uh, red cofibration should be part of a push-out diagram, where uh, here uh, we want this uh, kind of uh, sphere symbol uh, that I, I didn't give you the, the exact definition, but they are defined in such a way that uh, um, they have a prescribed uh, K theory. And uh, this map, besides being a cofibration, should induce the uh, correct exact short exact sequences in case theory because this is what allows you then to uh, to compute things so to compute uh, to uh, well not really to compute it, but to give some recursive relations between the case theory of these uh, uh, quantum spaces appearing in this uh, uh, sequence. So there is a general theorem that maybe uh, I will skip uh, that. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, that is uh, says uh, basically exactly what I said, uh, which gives you a recursive relation for each k uh, between uh, the k theory of xk and the k theory of xk minus one. But uh, I want to skip this and give you just uh, this example. <clears throat> so suppose now you have uh, a, um, um, a weak CW structure where x zero is uh, a point. And at each step, you attach only one cell and uh, even dimensional. And then in this case, uh, um, you can really uh, explicitly compute the case here. You can, you can prove that Xn has K0 equal to zeta to the power n plus one and K1 is equal to zero. So it's the same case theory as a complex projective space. Uh, both uh, the quantum projective spaces that we saw, the one coming from Waxman Savilman quantum sphere and the one coming from uh, Higar uh, quantum sphere, they are uh, special cases of this construction. Um, so are special cases of this class of examples. And in fact, for these two type of quantum projective spaces, we proved uh, a little bit more. So for um, uh, Higar the um, quantum projective spaces, you have uh, a weak filtration by skeleta, which is uh, really weak, meaning that uh, uh, maps from one projective space to the next, the morphism are um, not maps. So the morphisms are uh, weak confederations. You have uh, a similar filtration by skeleton of um, baxman seibelman uh, quantum projective space, except that here you have uh, actual uh, cofibrations, or you can think of this as a weak cofibration, which is a represented, uh, I mean, if you want to put this and this on the same ground, you can think of uh, an actual cofibration as a weak one where this arrow is invertible, is uh, an isomorphism. And, uh, and uh, you have uh, a commutative diagram uh, um, um, uh, where on top, so on top, the, the first row and the second row, these are the CW structure of these two quantum spaces. And uh, the vertical arrows are K equivalences. So this you can interpret as uh, um, a, a, some kind of equivalence with, uh, between the filtration uh, by skeleton of these two quantum projective space. Francesca, may I just now, cut yeah. in for, for, for yeah. a second because I think this is an interesting historical um, fact. Uh, the whole theory, everything we're talking yeah. about here started from the simple fact that when yeah. you look at this map between CPN minus one H and CPN H, it just does not yeah. exist as a star homomorphism. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we needed it to, to compute something. And then we realized, wait a second, actually, there's an error in our formula. The star homomorphism we are writing does not exist. Uh, and we, I, I know we wanted to determine the generators of K0 of this yeah. space. 
and 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 that's why we needed this yeah, yeah. iteration and we needed this kind yeah, of then the, the complex next step factor. was we realized that you had a, a map to the sister algebra of this kind of tubular neighborhood exactly only later yeah. added this geometrical interpretation yeah. then we realized that there were we had this the vertical equivalent but this is this is an example of this yeah. phenomenon which kevin referred to that yeah. uh, uh, you use graph sister algebras to explain things way beyond graph sister yeah, yeah. algebras because even though these Herard uh, quantum spheres are uh, higher than graph sister algebras, I, I don't know and I don't believe that yeah. these fixed point subalgebras are higher than graph sister algebras. I know Jack did probably right when you have uh, when you take um, a that circle action on the higher than graph sister algebra and take the fixed point sister subalgebra. It's not necessarily higher than graph. I mean, it's not even true for regular graphs, uh, but. Uh, Yeah, that's not TN here, just T. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's uh, so I, I, yeah. I, by no means you can think about them as yeah. uh, graph sister algebra, but they have this beautiful relationship to the actual graph yeah. sister algebra. But of course, these are different sister algebra. Yeah. You cannot hope for a star uh, for a star isomorphism, but what do you can and, you, what you can hope for is something which is isomorphism on K theory and this. Yeah, and this is actually also related to what I said at the beginning that uh, for every topological space you can find uh, a CW complex which is weak equivalent and here at least for these sister algebras you can find the graph sister algebra which is equivalent. exactly yeah. except that here the arrow goes in the wrong direction is from the uh, general sister algebra through the i mean it is it's from these to the one described by the graph sister algebra still and also is not a general theorem Okay, let me just very quickly uh, show one last slide with uh, some uh, uh, Future things that one could do. So the next obvious thing is okay uh, to see if you can generalize this. Um, if more general quantum flag manifolds have this kind of CW structure, and here I just wanted to mention, even if nobody of these guys is here or online, that uh, Matas and Jung can uh, prove that for at least for Q equal to zero. Um, uh, uh, the sister algebra of SUQN is a higher rank graph sister algebra, and from that you can deduce that uh, quantum flag manifolds, at least the irreducible ones, are a standard graph sister algebras. And I think, but uh, what, this, what is missing here is to show that the sister algebra does not depend on Q. And there is also some, uh, I found a, a report, a Nobel Wolfack report by um, Brzezinski, uh, Uli, uh, Raymond Boachal, and Karen Strong, uh, where, where basically they prove that they announce a theorem, but the proof is there that um, you can prove that every quantum flag manifold, not only reducible one, uh, is described by something isomorphic to a graph star algebra. And here there is not even this Q problem. Uh, um, um, the only thing I'm not sure there is only a Nobel Wolfack report and nothing, and no preprint. Uh, so um, Thomas he, he said uh, that uh, there is nothing for public consumption yet. So maybe they are mm -hmm. still fixing some details. But still, for example, here you can see the graph of the full flag manifold uh, F U one two three. And the next thing could be okay uh, to see if there is a generalization of this uh, fullback structure theorem for uh, from a graph to higher rank graph structure. If there is a version, uh, a, a good notion of dreamable higher rank graph sister algebra. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Now it's time for questions, remarks. Uh, in the definition of the CW complex, uh, the balls which you used, uh, B, Q, uh, B, 2K minus 1 and S, uh, so they, they are not the classical balls. They are some sort of uh, custom made such that they induce some sort of yeah. uh, weight or a sequence. Yeah. So are these balls? Uh, graph or higher rank graph algebras or are so they not? here there is um, I mean they can be anything they can be this uh, can be a morphism between any pair of sister algebras the only assumption is that uh, the case here is what we want of these two sister algebras and that this map induces some short exact sequence but uh, the sister algebras could be anything 
So we can uh, substitute them for, for example, he got type quantum spheres or. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. okay, are there questions? Perhaps online. Francesca, have a look if anybody online wants to ask. Uh, no, I don't see anybody raising that. So. Okay, so, so I, I have a question, but not to Francesca. Uh, Soren, can you hear me? Is Soren there? He, he was. Uh, some... I, I don't see everybody. I only see four. I think that he is not there. Uh -huh. I cannot see him. On his... Okay, so I withdraw my question. But maybe you can ask me if it is possible no. that by random choice. I, no, there's no chance that you know yeah. the answer to my question. No way. Maybe one, well, it's not a very well informed question, but uh, how about the infinite uh, CW complexes? So uh, what happens there? Well, it's, uh, and you if, have an, even in the classical case, you have non unital sister algebras. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. And then, uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, even if for uh, non compact topological spaces, you have two choices of morphism. Maybe you want to use proper maps, uh, or maybe you want to use. Uh, yeah, you, the you know what I want yeah. to use. Yeah, so okay. It's very complicated. Okay. We, thank we decided you. to avoid it. I mean, you start with. Uh, <laughs> I see. Thank compact. you. May I comment? Or instead of sister algebras, you could consider pro sister algebras. That's exactly what Marius Tobolsky is doing in local triviality dimension. Yeah, I, I know. Yes, thank you. When the space is not even locally blocked. But... Okay, in case there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker again. And the next next talk is at five. Yeah.